verse in the Bible that says that's how you're supposed to take communion. You can't find a single statement that could even kind of sound that way yeah. in the Bible. And yet, all of us, for how long? Hook, line, and sinker. Rolled with it. You bet. Like it was the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And yet there isn't a single verse in the Bible related to communion that says anything near that. Yeah. Yeah. It's the church's focus on sin as opposed to their focus on Christ. Right. Completely. Yeah. And so you see how the serpent wants to do it. He can't nice. stop what Jesus did, but if he can get us to think about what, what Jesus did with the carnal mind, and we could see it through his eyes instead of seeing it through the Spirit, yeah. we can even look upon what the Lord did to heal us, and we can find it that we're getting more sick. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> because you take communion, you're looking upon what the Lord did for you. Yeah. Now, if when you're taking communion and you're looking upon what the Lord did for you, you're busy remembering your own sins, listen, that will make you sick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That will continue to make you sick. It will subvert your soul. It will cause unrest in your soul. It will bring fear upon you, condemnation in your heart. You'll feel judged by your sin, and that will work death inside of you. You see how the serpent can get you to even look upon the Lord? And if he can get you to look upon the Lord, even from his view of it, it will still work death in you. Yes. Right? Yes, absolutely. Which is why he's so concerned with perverting the gospel and mixing in his wisdom with the gospel. Because if the gospel is preached, but it's mixed with his wisdom, then it makes it of no effect. Just like with the Galatians. When Paul found the Galatians, and they thought, well, yeah, let us be circumcised now. It's in the law of Moses. And Paul said, listen, you've made Christ of no effect in your lives. If you're going to try to be justified by your ability to do good through your flesh, you're making Christ of no effect in your life. And you're heaping upon yourself judgment. Yeah. Not judgment from God, but you're judging yourself unworthy of eternal life because you're not discerning the Lord's body and blood. Right? right? Yes. You're not discerning what Jesus did. You're not discerning that he made you clean. Remember when, when Peter was sleeping and he had the vision of the unclean animals yes. and the Lord said, rise up and eat Peter. Right. And he said, not so, Lord. Yes, I'll Lord. not eat anything unclean. And what did God say to Peter? Don't call unclean that which I have cleaned. Yes. That's what I have cleansed. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now, he was using that as an example to talk to Peter about the Gentiles, about Cornelius. Mm -hmm. Well, Cornelius in his house hadn't believed yet, and God called him cleansed. Mm -hmm. So don't call unclean what I have cleansed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if you want to think of anything about your sin, if, if you're in the place where you even want to think of your sin when you're taking communion, think about how it's been cleansed once for all time. Right? Yeah. Think about how it's been removed from you yeah. as far as the east is from the west. Right. Think about how Hebrews 8 and Hebrews 10 says God no longer remembers our sin. Right. Think about mm -hmm. that and find your heart rejoicing about that and find whatever condemnation you feel because of your, your sin. Fi find yourself being set free from that mm -hmm. in your heart, right? Which will Amen. then ultimately be freedom in your life. Amen. From it. Absolutely. Absolutely. The tradition.